part three of video 149 looks at input requirements. So still thinking about the requirement specification. Uh, it's a new heading of input requirements. This is a list of the data that will be input into the system by any user. Most of this will be field names for the, from the database uh, that stores the data for the new system. Some of the list, however, might be temporary data that is not to be stored in the database. We could show this in a table, and there's an example. Pause the video and have a good look. But for a better mark, we might consider these things. Don't just show the field name and the purpose. Also show the data type for each field, the field size, and some example data. You could break the table into sections because some areas of the system will be used might be by a student, other areas by uh, an administrator. So which bits of input does which user do? Try and split it up if you can. You might talk about form techniques or controls which will be used for different fields. Are you going to have combo boxes? Are you going to have text boxes, radio buttons, what? How will you limit errors in the form design? So think about your good form design techniques. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, about some of those in further bullet points on this slide, but validation might be something you think about. Is it going to be on-screen help to navigate the system? On-screen help to understand what to do next? To how to input data? Um, hints to help answer a question. Say you were doing a revision uh, quiz test style system. Um, what's the type of language to be used on the screen? We don't mean um, French, German, English, whatever. We actually mean what level of language, how complicated instruction is going to be in your system. There's the mark scheme. See you later.